Hey everyone, this is John, and in this video I'm going to be talking about a DC motor controlled by analog inputs. And we have four different analog inputs. I have a potentiometer, and I have three different light-dependent resistors. Let's go ahead and talk about how the circuit works. Basically, how it works is each one of these push buttons controls one of the analog inputs. This push button controls a potentiometer input. LED is on. So the potentiometer sends analog voltages to the microcontroller. The microcontroller takes those analog voltages and converts them to digital uh, values. Then the microcontroller takes those digital values and converts it to a pulse width modulated signal. Then the microcontroller sends the pulse width modulated signal to the motor controller. The motor controller takes that pulse width modulated signal, bumps it up with more voltage and current, and it drives the DC motor. The larger the voltage across the potentiometer, basically, after all that, equals to a faster spinning motor. So it spins faster. Spins slower. The lower the voltage, the slower it spins. The higher the voltage, the faster it spins. That's basically how it works. And each light dependent resistor has different characteristics. This first one needs a little bit of light, it'll, and it'll go. This middle one needs a whole lot of light to be able to go. Pretty much have to get the flashlight right up in that LDR's grill. And this last light dependent resistor needs a little kick, but then the ambient light keeps it going. And the more light it gets, the faster it goes. But it pretty much keeps going with the ambient light. So that's basically how this circuit works. Now, I have a couple of other parts of the circuit that I'd like to talk about. This part right here is the voltage regulation. So, the motor controller and the microcontroller need different voltages to operate. As I said before, the, one of the reasons we need the motor controller is because DC motors, and motors in general, steppers included, need higher voltages and higher currents than microcontrollers usually produce. So, I have this 9 volt feeding the motor controller, which in turn feeds the DC motor. And I have this voltage regulation circuitry to regulate the 9 volts down to 3.5 volts, which is what the microcontroller really likes. So that's what this circuitry is here, this voltage regulation. This is the on-off switch. And this right here is a very important piece. If you want to use the MSP430 uh, G2553 on a breadboard, you need the voltage, 3.5 volts, from the positive rail going through this resistor to the reset pin of the microcontroller. It just needs that to operate. It's, it's, it's the entrance fee. It's the club cover. If you want to go in, you got to pay the cover. In this case, that's what this resistor does. It gets the voltage from the voltage to the reset pin and allows the microcontroller to go. And I have it hooked up to a reset pin, reset button, actually. So I have the program going, something's wrong, hit the reset button, bam, resets the software, everything's good to go all over again. So to reiterate, um, analog voltages come into the microcontroller. The microcontroller converts them to a digital signal, then converts that digital signal to a pulse width modulated output which it sends to the motor controller. The motor controller takes that pulse width modulated signal, bumps up the voltage and current, sends that signal to the motor, and in turn it drives the motor either faster or slower, depending on the input. A low voltage input equals slow motor. High voltage input equals fast motor. Voltage regulation for the two chips, higher voltage current, lower voltage current, and a reset push button. 
that's the project. I'm John. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best. Have a good one.